Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Participation in Government. Uh, my name is Mr. Rader, and this lesson will look at uh, day 19 of Unit 2 in Participation in Government, looking specifically at how cases move through the judicial system. And we will also examine the types of cases that the Supreme Court of the United States, or SCOTUS, uh, hears. So in this video, we're going to cover two components of the introduction and model to this lesson. The first part, we'll look at how cases actually get to the Supreme Court. And then we will look at the case Frontiero versus Richardson amicus excerpt to learn a little bit more about what an amicus brief is. So let's take a look at this document, how cases get to the Supreme Court. So We'll start with the flowchart from when cases are brought by uh, a case involving state law or a case involving federal law. So for the most part, when a case involves federal law, it's brought first to the federal district courts. And in New York State, it's part of the Second Circuit, which includes the District of Connecticut, Eastern, Northern, Southern, and Western Districts of New York, and the District of Vermont. If a case is appealed, it goes to the Circuit Court of Appeals. And as we go from the Circuit Court of Appeals to the Supreme Court of the United States, uh, we look at what's called a writ of certiorari. And in most cases, this writ is needed for a case to be heard by the Supreme Court. It does not ask the Supreme Court to review the facts of the case, but to resolve important questions about federal law raised by the case, including constitutional issues, right? So we know that by judicial review, right, from the case Marbury versus Madison, that other than that the Supreme Court can determine whether or not a law that was passed, if it's constitutional or unconstitutional, another major job of the court is to make certain that federal law is uniform across the country. Now, by contrast, if we look at this flow chart, if a case involves state law, there are first state trial courts. And then if a defendant loses an appeals, they go to the intermediate appellate courts. And we call this the New York Supreme Court Appellate Division in New York. And an additional appeal can be made to the state Supreme Court. And if necessary, a writ can be filed and it can go to the Supreme Court of the United States. So that's how cases tend to get to the court. The next question is, how or what role can the amicus uh, brief play in these cases getting to the court? So we're gonna take a look at the excerpt from Frontiero versus Richardson Amicus in 1973 by Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And just for some general background information on an amicus, it's a friend of the court who offers new or alternate arguments to sway the opinion of the justices. And in this lesson, we'll examine how the court cases really make their way through the court and how the court decides what cases to actually hear. And the Supreme Court really is the court of last resort. It's the highest appellate. And the Supreme Court really only hears about 1% of lower court case decisions as noted in uh, 2017 docket term. Uh, and you'll be looking at the most recent docket when you do the amicus brief as part of the summit of assessment at the end of this unit. And in this lesson, in the independent work, your teacher will likely assign you one of these cases. Uh, it could be Obergefell versus Hodges, Gonzalez versus Rage, Roper versus Simmons, Gruder versus Bollinger, or Bush versus Gore in 2000. And in this document, I just want to highlight some of the, of the key components here. So in this brief that was filed by Ruth Bader Ginsburg, she uses the uh, analogy here. She says, sex like race is a visible, immutable characteristic bearing no, relation, no, ne no necessary relationship to ability. And then she goes on to say, it is clear that the core purpose of the 14th Amendment was to eliminate invidious racial discrimination. And that's what this case begins to really look at. And when we look at this resource for how to really read the court cases, there are a few things I'd like to highlight in the, in the time that we have left together. And I highlighted some of it. But first thing to look at is this sidebar because it explains pretty clearly the, some of the basic facts that you need to know when doing research on court cases. But we see the case number at the very top and when it was, dis and when it was brought to the court. We'll see the appellant or the person appealing the decision versus the appellee or the person who's responding to the appeal. Uh, we can see the, where it was appealed from. So I highlighted that this case that was argued in 1973 was appealed from the US District Court for the Middle District of Alabama. 
And we can see that we have the parties that are involved, the lawyers that were involved for the appellants, for the appellees, along with a uh, future Supreme Court justice, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who argued the cause to the American Civil Liberties Union, the ACLU, as an amicus curiae who wrote this thing, urging reversal on the previous decision. And the question that was before the Supreme Court was the right of a female member of the uniformed services to claim her spouse as a quote, dependent for the purposes of obtaining increased quarters allowances and medical and dental benefits. And in the first few paragraphs, whenever you examine a court case, we'll always learn about the people who are involved, the question that's being uh, brought before the court, along with the ruling of the, the lower courts. And we'll also sometimes see when we look at the actual court cases in the beginning, the opinion of the majority of the justices of the Supreme Court of the United States. So those are some of the things that you're gonna wanna look for whenever reading court cases as, as part of your studies um, in participation in government. All right, so that'll do it for today. Again, I hope everybody has a nice day and I look forward to the next video in the series.